Sexual perversion is genocide. It's a form of self-induced genocide. Let me put up a definition here from the Oxford Dictionary for the word genocide. It says, the deliberate killing of a large number of people from a particular nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying that nation or group. Um, some people came out back in the 20th century, some educated people and everything, and uh, they came out with this thing of limits to growth. You know, the MIT, the Club of Rome came out with it. Um, I think there was some people from MIT. I think there was some from Harvard as well. And they came out with this thing that the earth is overpopulated and we need to start to increase the death rate and lower the birth rate. Okay. The uh, Georgia Guidestones that were destroyed, I believe, by lightning, the Lord, you know, destroyed them. Uh, they said maintain humanity under 500, mil or, yeah, 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Well, there's eight some, I think it's right around 8 billion or something like that. Forget the statistic. But uh, there's a lot of people, certainly a lot more than 500 million, all right? Uh, so it's a problem for these globalists, these extremists that uh, want to control things. There's too many people. Too many people represent too big of a threat. Because if the people ever figure out who these people are that serve the devil, these servants of hell, the people would rise up and go hunt them down and kill them like the animals that they are. Of course, the devil will just pick up you know, new people. Then, but uh, the people in the banking sector and the secret societies and things like that, um, they're very careful. They don't want people to find out about what they do and who they are. They don't like to be named publicly. And most of the big boogeymen, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and whatever else, are actually very, very low down in the power structure um, compared to the principalities and the powers that really are there. In Ephesians chapter 6, you can read about that. But you say, what's the deal with the sexual perversion thing? Well, uh, if you look at the genocide movement, the eugenics movement and things like that of the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, a lot of this stuff started to come about after that happened. A lot of the perversion. I'm going to be going over a number of um, perversions there. Uh, and it's all designed to have people sterilize themselves. Because the Bible is very clear what you're supposed to do. Let me show you. Genesis chapter 1. Go to the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. When God made man, we didn't evolve from goo. Sorry to tell you that. We were created by an infinitely intelligent being named God. And um, if you don't believe that, well, it's because you have an agenda. Uh, it's not science that has convinced you of that. You have to believe uh, in your mind that there is no God. You have to tell yourself that there is no God. Everything didn't come about as a random chance years ago, uh, like the foolish Jesuit priest, uh, Georges Lemaitre, I think his name is pronounced that way, um, a Jesuit, Roman Catholic Jesuit. So religion came up with the whole idea of the Big Bang Theory. Huh. Um, almost like they might be part of the uh, satanic globalist agenda that wants to destroy large portions of the population. You know, by coming out with a uh, interdict last uh, few years there. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female, male and female, <laughs> created he them. The Bible says there's only two genders, and science says there's only two genders. Why? Because if there's more than two genders, they would be eliminated in one generation. Because if you have something that cannot procreate, then that genetic disposition within that particular creature would not be passed on to future generations because it would die out. You see, all sexual perversion is self-induced genocide. You're being killed off as a large number of people, as a large group. You see, for thousands of years, people married and they had children and the nations grew in power. And then things like war or whatever else would come along and it would reduce that population back down again. 
and then they would marry and they would start to build up their population. But now we have a thing of, we don't have to have wars, we don't have to have disease or famine or whatever else. No, no, people sterilize themselves through being perverts. All right, and I'm not just going to go after sodomites in this video. There's other types of perversion that you can get involved in that's also part of genocide. But what should they do? God created male and female. Everybody watching me today came from a male and a female. Verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God gave us a reason to be here, and that is to take care of His creation, to be stewards of the earth. That's what we're supposed to do. Be fruitful, multiply, pass on that information. I learned a lot about uh, foraging for wild edibles from my grandfather. And he taught my mother, and she taught me, and I teach my son. You see, that's how things work. Wisdom is passed down through the generations. But if you break that and you say, well, all of a sudden, I'm no longer going to be able to produce children because I'm a different gender now or because I'm a different, I'm interested in different uh, sexual orientations that cannot produce my own children, my own offspring. Well, guess what? I die out and the wisdom dies out with me. Oh, well, you could adopt and you can go. And, you know, I know all the arguments. I know all the arguments. But the fact of the matter is sexual perversion is a mental decision. You're not born that way. It's not scientifically possible. It's not spiritually possible, and it's not scientifically possible. So stop pretending that it is, because that's a lie. Romans chapter 1, there's a lot more scriptures we could go through, uh, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through all the different scriptures that talk about perversion. I'm just trying to cover what the basic argument is here. Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 32 Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Sexual perversion is you are dishonoring your body. Did you know that? That's what it is. Uh, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Sexual perversion is called a vile affection in God's sight. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. It's against nature. It's not a natural thing to be a pervert. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. You say, well, hey, this stuff has been, it's in the past, man. We've, we're okay with sodomite rights now. We're okay with sodomite marriage. Why would you bring this up? Nobody believes this way anymore. I never was for it. The Bible never was for it. Old Testament and New Testament. It's rational, logical thinking here. Sodomy, a man and a man and a woman and a woman, they don't produce children. They die out. They've killed themselves. Don't you get it? Don't you see it's part of a larger globalist agenda? They want you dead. If you're a pervert out there, a sodomite or some of the others I'll be talking about here in just a minute, if you're a pervert, you've been slated for destruction. There are people that want you to sterilize yourself. Go on out and have your filthy uh, you know, fornication and whatever sodomy type of stuff. Have all the little stuff that you want to do, all the little fetish things and all the weird stuff. They want you to do that because they know that you will not be able to have children as a result. And so you're dead. You're out of the way. You're no longer part of the problem. That's what the whole system is about. Remember, you can study it. The eugenics movement of the early 1900s, they're coming out, they're saying, hey, we need to start getting people into sodomy and getting them into other things so that they will be sterile. Let's start to sterilize people. Let's sterilize people through the food. Let's sterilize people through chemical sterilization and through whatever other means. Let's encourage a very sexually perverted culture. You know why? Because they don't want people to have children. They don't want the, you know, quote unquote, nuclear family. They don't want that. So television starts to promote it early on with the Andy Griffith show, a man who raises his son with his aunt. 
What about his wife? Oh, she died, so then he just never gets married again until, you know, a long time later, and then it's sort of a, just a... Mm -hmm. They attacked it from the very beginning. You start out with the wholesome shows, like the Andy Griffith show, and then as time goes by, then you have a guy, and he's living with two different girls, and then they're single, and, and then you have this, and then there's that, and, and all these other things, and, and friends later on in the 1980s, and they're all just a bunch of fornicators, and they just switch partners, and each, each week they have new partners and things. There has been a scientific agenda to manipulate your mind into being a pervert. It's there. Why all of a sudden is there pornography? Why are there adult films? Why is there this, all this other stuff? Why the big push? What's the big agenda here? It's genocide. It's what it is. I'm not hateful for saying that. I'm speaking in scientific terms right now. Uh, verse 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge boy that came true God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient it's not convenient for you to sterilize yourself being filled with all unrighteousness fornication sex outside of marriage in other words Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. You don't know what natural affection is? Holding a little baby. Holding your precious little baby. You look down in the little baby's eyes and they look up at you and they have put their little hand up. And you kiss their little hand and you look at them and you hold them and you protect them. The ultimate symbol of love between a man and a wife and his wife is children. Daddy! Welcome home, Daddy. Look at what Mommy and I made for you. Oh, wow. Made cookies for me? Let me try one. Oh, that's so good. You did that for Daddy. Oh, thank you. It's natural affection. You don't have that if you're a pervert. You can't have, well, we can adopt and things. Why are you adopting? What are you trying to look like? The normal family? Man, wife, and children? <laughs> Who, knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They go out and they have rallies. I mean, hey, let's have a rally, you know. We're standing for our rights. We have a special flag that we fly. You know, the family's rights, family's rights. Husband and wife and child, we're fighting for our right to be normal. You see? We don't have pleasure in them that do them in terms of being perverts. But you get people that have this whole thing of perversion, whatever flavor it is out there, and they have pleasure in them that do them. Let's show support for each other. Let's, we have to support each other in our cause of killing ourselves. Let me give you six different types of sexual perversion. First and foremost, one that's probably the most common, masturbation and pornography. I thought you were just going after, you know, the perverts out there, those queers and everything. Uh, no, a lot of the uh, Christians out there that'll stand up and say about queers and all this other stuff and sodomites, and they themselves are guilty of perversion. And ironically, a lot of them that I've known They'll actually look at pornography that depicts sodomy and then go out and condemn sodomy. Bunch of hypocrites. If you are a single person and you are spilling your own seed, be it male or female, through masturbation, speaking very bluntly, and it's because you're looking at pornography, be it softcore, hardcore, what if stuff online, whatever else that you're being tracked and traced, every little click that you make, if you're doing that, you're a pervert. You're a pervert. Plain and simple. What about fornic fornication and birth control and abortion when the, the birth control fails? Um, that's perversion. Straight couples. And I've known a lot of them. They go out there and they just fornicate and fornicate and birth control and everything else. You're not doing things God's way. 
oh, but I'm together physically with the, you know, I have a girlfriend and we just go, you know, we park someplace in the back seat and, uh-huh, are you producing children? Are you taking responsibility for her? Of course not. You're a pervert. You are a sexual pervert. Oh, someday I'll meet the right girl and everything else. Yeah, then your mind has been seared. Your conscience is gone. And what kind of girl are you going to get? One that's been with 10, 15, 20 different guys before you? And she's going to make a good wife, huh? And you're going to make a good husband, a good responsible husband, faithful and true to that one girl? So, brother, you know, we were lost in the past and now we got saved. Yeah, okay. Praise the Lord. It's under the blood. The Lord's taking care of it. It's washed our sins away. Whatever. You don't have to be virgins to get married and, and stuff if you're saved. I'm not saying that. All right. There are people that had very wicked paths. They get saved. Past. They get saved. The Lord washes those sins away and they can go on to live a, to have a happy marriage. Sure. But it's never going to be quite right. There's always going to be some things there that shouldn't be there because of that life of sin, that life of sexual perversion. You have to deal with it. You just say, well, okay, you know, not much I can do about it. Move forward. But uh, if you're burning, get married. It's good for you. It's responsibilities and things like that. And if you're uh, masturbating and things as a single person, you're in sin. You're just as sexually perverted as a sodomite or something like that. Now, you know, oh, God didn't destroy a nation because of masturbation. I, I get that. I get it. Sodomy's the far end of the spectrum, but it's still in the same spectrum of sexual perversion. Uh, number three, sodomy. Men with men, women with women. We just saw it attacked right there in Romans chapter 1. Paul on epistles to the church age today. Not Old Testament, old, you know, horrible laws that they had back in the past. No, no. Today. God is not for sodomite nations. And America has just gone, America was going like this, you know, down, and then they passed the sodomite marriage stuff and it just went off a cliff. And you look at when that thing got passed and it's just crashing and burning right now, this nation. And the more perversion comes out, the more people are quiet about it and whatever else, it's just going to get worse and worse. Like transgenderism. Now all of a sudden these people are saying, there's more than just two genders. No, there isn't. No, there is not. And it's not persecuting anybody to say that. You can't take away my rights to defend yourself. You see? That's, that's intolerant. That's bigoted. Okay? Scientifically, you can prove that there's only two genders. You know, I saw a button the one time said, there's only two genders. Everything else is mental illness. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a rather sick thing to say, you know, these take these poor children and these warped satanic School teachers and medical doctors are saying we can do reassignment surgeries and give you drugs, uh, puberty blockers and things like this. That's wickedness. Those people, they're trying to kill those kids. They don't want those children to grow up to be good, productive members of this nation. Husbands and wives and producing lots of children. They don't want that. Pedophilia. Number five, pedophilia. Oh, I'm minor attracted now. This is the new thing. Minor attracted or whatever. Oh, like the Catholic priests down through the centuries? I guess they were all minor attracted too. Um, no, it's wickedness. And how can you have a good family? You get some guy, he's 60 years old or something like that, and he's messing with some seven-year-old little girl or whatever. Is that a healthy family? Is that a healthy relationship? Of course not. It's perversion. It's satanic. It's wickedness. And what that priest does when he molests that child, and there's others that do it too. Pedophilia is not just the soul, solely in the Catholic Church. That's where a lot of it is. But uh, what, are, what, are they, what are they doing? The priest messes with the child. The child grows up and says, don't touch me. I was molested as a child. I don't want to have a normal relationship with anybody. So, so yes, it does line up with the thing of genocide. Little children get molested. One of my friends growing up, uh, Travis Metzler was his name. I'll just say the name. He was molested as a child and uh, grew up and couldn't have any kind of normal relationships and whatever else, was struggling with sodomy and struggling with trying to date girls and whatever else, and it just didn't work out. And he called his mother up, said, I can't take it anymore. Walked outside, boom, she came and found him laying there. A number of years ago, messed him up. 
Genocide. You see? He ended his life with a gun. But how many people out there end their lives with all kinds of venereal diseases? All kinds of sickness and an old person. Now they're too old to have a wife and children. God can save somebody like that. Certainly, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Absolutely. But you blew it. You made, you made a terrible mistake with your life. Should have gotten married young. Young man, get out of high school or whatever else, get through your school training and say, I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to work hard. If I can't find a good job, then I'll make a good job. I'll get some skills and whatever. I want to work hard. I don't want to be sterilizing myself. I don't want to make myself be part of this genocide movement. And finally, the one of the ones that the Bible says about is bestiality. Um, it's, it's done here in America. It's been done for years. I used to work with a black guy at the one factory, and he told me down, down in Georgia where he grew up, he said, he said there were boys that were going in farmer's sheep and things like that, and they were committing bestiality with the sheep. Back probably in the 1970s. Yeah. As a boy growing up, I remember the one time there was a farm show and they called a guy and he was in with the cows. Bestiality. Ran him off and everything. They were looking for the guy. If anybody has any information, please you know, contact the authorities, call the police. We're still trying to find out who this guy was. Yeah, it goes on. Uh, might not be mainstream yet, but they'll, they'll get there. They'll get there. Why? Because the people that promote the sodomy and the perversion and the transgender stuff and all the other things, they want you dead. Yeah, it's so funny. All these Hollywood liberals, they come out and they say, guns shouldn't be in the hands of people. Oh, wait. I don't only have to go in here to the uh, movie set and <laughs> violently shooting people, blowing people's heads off, and then they off camera. I think we should have no guns at all. What are you doing? Hey, the FBI comes out and they say, this guy made a terrorist a threat. He made some kind of terroristic threat online. He said people should be killed. What about the rap singers that talk about going out and shooting people? Oh, that's covered by free speech, but yours isn't. Huh? You see, there's a movement. It's a genocide movement. They want to reduce the population numbers. And who's at the head of it? That would be the devil. Satan. Oh, I don't believe in such nonsense. Oh, oh, you will. You will one day. Because if the Bible is right, and it is, um, things are going to get worse. And you'll get to see firsthand what it all means. So that's going to be it for this study. Um, if you're involved in sexual perversion, brethren, and I know a lot of you are out there, I know there are those of you out there, oh, you're not a sodomite, you're not a bestiality, you're not a transgender or, or a pedophile or whatever else. You might not even be a fornicator. But some of you are struggling with masturbation. It's genocide. You're sterilizing yourself. You better stop. Okay? The Bible says if you are burning with lust, then you need to marry. Period. Well, brother, I don't know if I could afford to support a wife. Would it? Then get out there and work hard. Do something. Because if you don't, you're violating the Scriptures. I'm preaching God's Word here. Submit to the book. That is going to be it. We'll see you in the next study.